Talent isn't enough. You could be the most talented photographer, and if you don't have other traits to help you out, you might find that you're not very successful. The good news is if you think that you're not a talented person, if you're kind of insecure in that way, we're gonna outline all the assets that you probably do have that can really help lead you to success. The bad news is if you are a person who thinks that you have that natural talent, it's gonna take more than just that. Yeah, but that's okay. That's an opportunity to learn. You know what it doesn't take talent to do? What's that? To set up your own Squarespace website because oh, it's, so, I knew it was coming. <laughs> it's so easy to do and it's so intuitive that if you can just take pictures from your folder and drag them onto your Squarespace website, you can make your very own. You might be wondering, why do I need a Squarespace website? You absolutely do. You want people to see your best photos because you want to look as talented as possible, right? Don't send people to your social media that's unprofessional. Send them to your very own Squarespace website where you can even set up a place to sell your prints. I just did that, Tony, and it looks pretty great. Great, they should go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-E-A. And then if they love it, the coupon code Chelsea will get you 10% off, so try it out. Yeah, we gotta spell that all the time. Um, Tony, I wanted to start reading the very first comments of our podcast. First. Yeah. <laughs> so every week I'll be reading the first comment, so hurry up and comment now because maybe you'll be it. I, I'm gonna read the first one from Julian Z this time. Yeah. But then the next relevant one, is Skip Campbell watched our last podcast about Canon being number one. I argued for Canon. You argued that Sony would be number one, but Skip said Chelsea KO'd Tony. And I, that wasn't even close to being the first comment, but I just thought that was relevant. Oh, really? I just relevant think it, from Chelsea's perspective. I thought it was the most important one. Hopefully we get like good first comments now. Yeah, we'll try harder, people. The first two traits are ambition and vision. So ambition is the like drive to do something. Ambition yeah. is can be directionless though. And that's where vision comes in. Vision is a goal that you want to accomplish. And the two go hand in hand. If you have ambition and no goal, then uh, nothing much happens. If you have vision and no ambition, then you don't actually get anything done. Ambition, I think, is interesting because it always comes from a place of discontent, right? You can be a very happy person and not be driven to do anything different. Why would you if you're already happy? The most ambitious people have something inside of them that makes them want something more. Wow, now you're asking a question you have me thinking like, can you be content and ambitious? That might be a whole other podcast, Tony. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> In my opinion, I don't think so. I think everybody who is ambitious has some kind of discontent in them that helps drive that along. Maybe that's not necessarily a bad kind of discontent. It's like, maybe you just see things could be better, right? Society, humanity is built on people with a little bit of discontent who wanted to make things a little bit better. Yeah. And I think you need that as a photographer too. Okay, I think something that goes along with that is passion because you can be ambitious and you can have that vision but I see passion as something deeper it's like it's like um, a core belief it's something you really care about and it drives you to keep doing the thing that you love so you can be passionate about animals and that drives you to take animal photos or you can be passionate about nature and that drives you to take landscape photos but one thing that I see in a lot of really successful photographers is that they have a passion beyond photography as well. So they love taking pictures and they're passionate about this extra thing. I think of the vision as being the rudder of a boat and the passion as being the sails. It's the passion that moves it forward. Yeah. And you could want to be a great photographer, but if you don't love the process of photography, then you're gonna run out of steam before you can get there. It's passion that drives you to improve your skill for 10 or 20 years. If you're listening to this and you think, I like photography, but I'm not passionate about it, right away you're not gonna be a great photographer. But if you are listening to this and you think, I don't think I'm that talented, but I really love photography, then go with that. If yeah. you don't have the passion, go find something else. But speaking for myself, I've been doing this for 25 years, which is a long time to do anything, right? Like I've changed careers multiple times while I've been a photographer. But I started wildlife photography 25 years ago because I loved wildlife and I loved the process of capturing the images. And I still love that. We still go out several times a, a week 
and get pictures of wildlife because I am truly passionate about it. Yeah, even when we're not taking pictures, we're passionate about it. Right. Um, yeah, that's really important. If you're lacking that initial talent, let your passion drive you, enjoy it, and don't focus so much on that immediate success that talent brings, but rather this other asset that you have, which is that you have more longevity. You can you have more time to work on it because you have more of that fuel. I've known talented photographers who did not have that much passion. And they will produce six months of amazing work and then it'll peter out and hopefully they find something that they're passionate about to move into. Yeah. But they're not gonna have a long career. Okay, here's a trait that I think is extremely important and that's adaptability. It's important in photography because the medium photo of photography is always changing. So if you were one of the people that started in the film era, maybe you put things in a slideshow and you made your family sit down as you changed the carousel and saw the slides on the wall. Did you have that, Tony? Yeah. It's a little different now. Your family had to sit there and pretend to be interested in your vacation photos. And now we're in the digital age. People are on social media. You might only get a split second of someone scrolling to see your picture and you get their attention. You have to be able to adapt to how the field is changing. There are still photographers out there taking slides and putting on slideshows with their Kodachromes, but you don't know their name, right? Maybe They're probably not making a living at it. Maybe they're, that'd be cool. Yeah, maybe they're passionate, maybe they're talented, but if they're not adaptable, then they're not going to achieve that success. And unless you achieve that success, then you can't necessarily put all your time into it because you probably have to have another job and other pastimes in order to, to pay the bills, right? I think that adaptability can be really difficult if you've already found success and then that method of having success has changed. And Sometimes it can be tempting to cling to it because you, you already got it and you work so hard for it, but you have to know when to let something go and to move on to something new. This is something that I struggle with with photography and YouTube. Sometimes I just really love doing something and it's not working anymore and it's not going to work and I have to just cut it loose or it just won't, it never works and I have to make the decision to walk away. I've noticed recently, it used to be YouTube was the place everybody went for education. Yeah. But now more and more people are going to TikTok and to vertical formats. And in the last couple of weeks, if you follow me, you've seen we're creating short tutorials in vertical formats because I'm trying to be adaptable. Yeah. And I'm still figuring out, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's okay. I got to get in there, figure it out. That's what adaptability is. It's, it's also like a lack of fear of failure. I can think of also just in photo shoots when you have to be adaptable. Because you can show up to a photo shoot and you may have one thing planned and your plan just might fall apart. Maybe the weather changes, maybe some piece of equipment stops working. There have been so many times when we're doing a shoot together and I have to like jerry-rig something. Something doesn't work and suddenly I'm making a paper cutout of something else or we're, you know, propping something together. Or maybe you thought the lighting would look good and it doesn't. So just being able to change quickly and accept that things aren't working is going to be a trait that's going to make your life easier. I can think of talented photographers who weren't adaptable and they've fallen off the radar. <laughs> you don't hear about them anymore. Let's talk about uh, confidence and optimism and how those have uh, contributed to the success of photographers. I think of uh, confidence as a belief in yourself, but the thing about confidence is it's not always warranted, right? And, and basically, when you're starting out as a photographer, it's pretty much never warranted. Like, let's yeah. be honest, photography is a skill that takes years, decades to really hone. Nobody picks up a camera day one and is going to produce great images because it's just not that simple. But there are people who have so much confidence and belief in themselves that they believe their first images are fantastic. And we've seen time and time again the people with that inner confidence, even if it's unjustified, go on to be successful. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it go both ways. I've seen it work against people, too, where they are so sure they're talented, they won't take any outside influence or advice, or they refuse to change. So I think confidence can be unhealthy. Like, I'm already great. Everyone should appreciate me. Or mm -hmm. confidence can be really healthy. Like, I know I can achieve this. I might not succeed the first time. I might not be the best for the first few years, but eventually with work, I have the confidence that I know that I can do this thing. And so I think there's just a health, a healthy level of confidence and also optimism. Yeah. Even if this doesn't turn out great this time, next time it will, or I'll keep trying, or I'll always land on my feet. Just understanding that even if things don't go well, you can make it work for you. 
Yeah, it could be confidence or optimism. Like you need one or the other. Either yeah. you believe in yourself or you believe in overcoming all the challenges that are going to be in your way and you believe that if you stick to it, things are going to work out. You know what's something I'm really confident in, Tony? Squarespace. <laughs> Yeah, Squarespace and that people are going to really enjoy setting up a Squarespace. And one thing that I'd really recommend that you do is set up a place to sell your prints. It's a great way to see if people actually mean it when they say, I'd love to buy one of your pictures because then you can say, go to my Squarespace and just click on the button and you can buy it and it's easy. They pay right there. They take credit cards. You don't have to handle any of the difficult stuff. Um, and if you even just sell one print per month, that means you pay off your Squarespace. It's really easy and it could be free if you sell a few prints. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, use the coupon code Chelsea. But this ties into confidence because I talk to people, photographers, and they'll introduce themselves and I'll say, oh, where can I see your portfolio? And they'll say, oh, my work's not ready for a portfolio yeah. yet because they lack that confidence. But everybody at some point has to decide that they're ready to show their work. And it's never going to be perfect. If you're that type who's waiting until your work is perfect, you're never going to get there. You have to decide, this is what I have now. And yes, maybe in five years, you're going to look back and think, oh, that was a little bit embarrassing. Yeah. I chased these trends and it didn't work out. That's okay. You can update your portfolio. You can update your Squarespace. To have the confidence to start now, create a portfolio, and then you can update it. I always am trying to update my portfolio. The fact that it's there gives me a purpose in my photography. It's improving that portfolio. So have some optimism. Make that portfolio at squarespace.com slash Chelsea. And when you love it, coupon code Chelsea after your free trial. You're not going to spell my name again? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a trait that I think is extremely important. If you have talent or if you don't have talent, you have to have self-awareness. And to me, self-awareness is the ability to know uh, what your, your strengths and your weaknesses are. And that's important because it's okay to not be good at everything, but to be aware of it gives you the opportunity to either learn how to better yourself or how to ask for help. And sometimes I make the decision to better myself. Like I noticed that my editing was slipping, so I learned more about editing photos. Uh, and sometimes I realize I just don't have the time to even learn that and that's an opportunity for me to outsource the work, have somebody else do it, call in a favor, whatever it is. And so being aware is very important. And confidence can be the enemy of self-awareness because some people have a great deal of confidence because their parents praise them every day and they said, oh, little Johnny, you're so smart, you're so good at everything you can do, you can do anything. And then they actually become afraid to try things because they might fail. Yeah. Self-awareness will allow you to acknowledge you're not perfect. You're not going to be the best at something immediately. You have these certain weaknesses and it's okay for you to find different ways to address them, such as outsourcing and such as developing those own skills and, and just acknowledging like, okay, you're not a perfect person. Nobody expects you to be. You're just human. Yeah, I think it's also a nice way to acknowledge that other skills are really useful and important and sometimes we can have the tendency to overvalue what we're naturally good at and having that self-awareness allows us to say, okay, well, I'm really good at the artistic side of photography, but I know that Tony could help me out with some of the technical stuff that's been challenging me. And so it gives you the opportunity to appreciate someone else and then also collaborate with them. Okay, the next point is storytelling. And I wanna use Ansel Adams as an example, probably the most well-known photographer of all time. But why is he so well-known? Odds are, there were lots of other talented landscape photographers at the same time. It was a popular medium, but you don't know their names. They probably produced images that were very similar. Would Ansel Adams' images stand alone if his name was not associated with him? I, the answer is definitively no, especially if you look at his early work. It was not that great, but he built a reputation for himself by making himself a part of the story. We heard of his adventures through Yosemite. He made himself interesting. He publicized himself. The photographer is inherently part of the success of an image and vice versa. Isn't they have that to like, be developed hand in hand. Isn't that the same thing with all art? I mean, I've seen these documentaries on really high-end reproductions of famous artists like Michelangelo or something, and people can perfectly replicate their art 
but it's a fake. It's a knockoff, and therefore it has zero value, even though it looks identical. And we see the same thing with name brand items. You could have your fake Gucci belt, but it's not really Gucci, and you're kind of your own brand once you become a photographer, and your story is a part of that brand. When Instagram started up and photographers were putting themselves in landscape pictures, they'd have some beautiful photo and then they would go stand on the peak of the mountain in their orange backpack. And old school photographers thought that was like narcissistic. Why would you make yourself part of the picture? But that is the secret. You were always part of the picture. Now more so, more than ever, you have to tell your, your own story and you have to make yourself a little bit famous a little bit admirable, a little bit interesting if you want your pictures to have those traits. There's no well-known photographer that you can think of that got there by keeping their stuff secret. Maybe Vivian Mayer. <laughs> yeah, but nobody knew who she was till she died, so that was really sad. So Vivian Mayer t took a lot of pictures. She was a very talented photographer, but her work was not discovered until after she had already died, and then I believe it was discovered at like a an auction house in Chicago or something. I, I may have that wrong. That's really sad. <laughs> yeah, and it's, that's probably not what you want your success story to be, right? Yeah. So if you are shy, you need to address that in your self-awareness and put yourself out there. If you think you're boring, you're not. Everybody is interesting. You just need to open up and allow other people to see what you have inside yourself. So yeah. put yourself out there. Make your social media you end your photos together. That is the secret of storytelling. Yeah, I like the um, travel photographers who their journey is a part of their photos. That's kind of fun. Well, it's always been that, right? Like the cliche of the National Geographic photographer was not founded solely based on the images, but the stories that went along with those images, the background, not the pictures themselves, which could be easily recreated, but it was about the entire journey of going off to some faraway land. Yeah, right? they often just made up the stories, more dramatic stories to go with the picture. E exactly, frequently as we have kind of exposed. Uh, <laughs> and when you take that story away, it's suddenly not nearly as interesting a picture, yeah. right? But nonetheless, the storytelling is key. Another thing that will help you be successful as a photographer our resources, obviously. You're probably thinking that's obvious. Well, one thing I've noticed is that not everyone is good at identifying their resources to use them. And so your resources can be the connections you have. Obviously, money is one that people think of, or wealthy parents or something like that, your education. It can be anyone around you or any ac access to something valuable that you have. So you could live near a national park. You could live in a beautiful location. You could live someplace with specific wildlife and those all become your resources. Um, I actually think of our video guy, Frank Denardi. He lives near us and he worked for a landscape company um, and he was helping landscape really high-end properties. But when he discovered he was really passionate about photos and video, those clients became his resources for his photo and video businesses. So he started doing real estate and then he was doing drone videos and now he's on YouTube. And so a lot of people might have been in his position and said, what resources? Like I'm in landscaping. What does that have to do with photography? But if you're open minded and you seize the opportunities that you have in front of you, you can leverage your resources to help with your photography. Yeah. Great suggestion. And one of the most important resources we've seen is early support. And unfortunately, this is something that you don't necessarily have a lot of control over, but I feel like I have to mention it because when you look at famous photographers, they always have a story of early support. Ansel Adams, his parents, when he was a kid, they gave him a brownie. They brought him to Yosemite. He took pictures and they encouraged that. Uh, when you look at Peter Lick, famous photographer, he, his parents gave him a brownie when he was eight years old. Mary Ellen Mark also got a brownie. Yeah. Brownies made a lot of photographers, apparently. David LaChapelle, he was a small kid when his mom put a camera in his hands. And if you don't know David LaChapelle, you should look him up. But he makes these incredibly orchestrated uh, portraits. And you know what his mom did when they took family portraits? She would arrange the family very carefully. And he took that and he ran with it. That early support was really key for him. Some of you are going to be missing this. This is not a requirement, but it has historically been a big benefit. If you look at people like Gordon Parks, Gordon Parks did not have any early support, but he had the passion and the drive and the vision, and those overcame the lack of early support. Yeah. He did have his mother who encouraged him to take piano lessons, and so he did have different forms of support, but yeah.
that does help people become successful, but you're probably past that point. I don't imagine there are any babies or small children <laughs> watching this. Uh, connections, personal connections are really key to a lot of photographers' success. So I just mentioned David LaChapelle. When he was 17, he happened to run into Andy Warhol, a really, really famous artist who gave him a job and mm -hmm. helped connect him. And when you look at David LaChapelle's photos, so many of them are of celebrities, you know, Michael Jackson, Pamela Anderson. These connections are sort of what built his career. This is going to be a challenge for some people, some, some people like me. Like, I'm not the best at making connections with people. I am just not really? an outgoing person. You know who has to deal with people emailing me to get to you? Yeah, well, you are better at those sorts of connections, right? It's, I'm self-aware. This is a challenge <laughs> that I face, and it's something that's kind of always held me back because I'm, I'm quiet, I'm a little bit shy, I'm not the outgoing person. Yeah, but now I think it's an easier time than ever to do that because you can make your connections online. Um, our photography book comes with a Facebook group called the Stunner Group, and a lot of people there banded together and made friends and then start groups outside the group and even get together in person. So you can find your people online and make communities, and that's enough to help you learn and grow and find connections. So even if you're not good at it, even if you're a bit shy, you can definitely make some connections online. Yeah, and push yourself to overcome that shyness. Or buddy up with an outgoing friend. That's what I always do. <laughs> yeah. Tony married a whole slightly more outgoing person. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Extreme, but sometimes necessary. All right, I think another, like, I looked at a lot of lists of, like, what makes successful people. And one that I didn't see that I think is important is personality or temperament. Um, because you can become pretty successful. You might, you know, get some traction with your photography, but... There are some personality traits that you might find hold you back. So if you're really like combative or if you have a bad temper, um, if you have any kind of emotional issues where you find yourself lashing out at someone or if you're just over competitive where you just see every single person as like someone that's going to impede on your success, that might actually eventually start to hold you back. Um, so if you have a great personality, you're outgoing, you're helpful, you're always kind to people, you'll get a good reputation and that will definitely help you. I know people that are not the most talented, but everybody loves them. Mm -hmm. And so people are always throwing opportunities at them because when you're kind, people wanna help you. If you struggle to be kind, you might find people are actually trying to like, maybe even put up roadblocks for you. I think the good news there is that if you have some challenges with your personality, that's a fixable thing. It's not something I can help you with on this channel, but um, it's definitely fixable. But personality is very important. Well, I've seen photographers who were able to ride a trend to notability and success in the short term, but their personality ended up preventing them from turning that into long-term success. And the one trait that people can't seem to overcome is just, uh, again, a lack of self-awareness because these people might uh, be particularly, uh, maybe they're narcissistic, mm. maybe they love to argue with people, but they can't acknowledge to themselves that they have those flaws and it's yeah. that that prevents you from fixing your personality flaws. So if you can look at yourself and you can say, oh, my personality flaws are, uh, I, I don't communicate very well, I'm not responsive, etc then that's a good sign. But if you're looking at yourself and you're thinking, I don't have any personality flaws, yeah, then this, that's when you really need to take some time and look inside of yourself. This is one that I've consistently struggled with because I'm not, you say I'm better at being outgoing, but I'm not. I have to work really hard at it. And there have been times when people have thought I was snubbing them when I was actually just feeling shy. And I realized, okay, that's something I have to work on. If people are gonna read me as being like, stuck up or ignoring them, then I have to go out of my way to greet people or, you know, I'm terrible at collaborating. So I've had to work really hard to set up the few collaborations we've had. And um, that's an ongoing one for me, for sure. Tell us about accountability. Accountability is important. I mean, this is a simple one. To me, having accountability means you're not constantly blaming all other external sources for your failure. So sometimes you'll see this like people don't like your pictures on Instagram and sometimes you'll feel like, well, Instagram's stupid. People there are stupid. They don't know what good pictures are. Or um, a photo shoot won't go well. A client gives you a hard time. Oh, that client was just annoying. All clients are annoying. I don't like them. There are definitely things outside of your control 
failures that will happen that are not your fault, but you can't control what you can't control. And this is why accountability is important, to always say to yourself, what went wrong that I could, I could control? What went wrong that I could work on and I can fix? And maybe it's having clear contracts with your clients so that they know what to expect. Um, or maybe it's understanding that if you post a certain social media, different things might be popular in different places and maybe you didn't research that thoroughly enough. So when I say that accountability is important, I just mean consider that things might be partially your fault and then think about what's in, within your control to fix them. Yeah, some people have to make it okay for things to be their fault. Some people just can't accept fault. It's it feels so bad hard. To them. It's really hard. It's too hard. No successful photographer got there day one and stayed there for 20 years. It takes a long time to really build a career. Even if somebody seems like an overnight success, it's probably because they've been working on it for a long time. So in addition to passion, this requires patience and discipline. Patience being knowing that it's not going to happen overnight that it's not going to happen in a month or even a year. Photography is a discipline that takes decades and you never perfect. There's no photographer who has perfected it. We all just get a little bit better every yeah. day, we hope. And discipline is continuing to go and improve yourself every day, every week, every month, even when you get a little bit tired, even when you'd rather sit and scroll on your phone. So if you paired up with me for being sociable, I paired up with you for discipline because I am always trying to go do something else. Yeah, I was raised by like a military family <laughs> and discipline is a strength of mine because that was just a requirement. You got up every day and you did what you had to do. Yeah. Yeah. If you're the metronome, I'm the jazz part that everyone's like, is this still a song? <laughs> Here we are demonstrating self-awareness, right? We do know our own strengths and yes, weaknesses. Yes, but think of all of the photographers that have to get up every morning at 5 a.m. to catch a sunset to see if this is going to be the picture that's the greatest with the greatest sunset. You see those pictures where people get a rainbow with lightning, with a bird flying by. It's sometimes luck, but more often it's just discipline, going out and taking photos, even though it's raining, even though you're tired, even though you stay up late. It's important. Yeah, you go out there every day for years until that magical moment actually happens. So if you have natural talent, that's great. Now you have more things to work on. And if you don't feel like you have natural talent, look at all of these other things that are extremely important. Um, if you think that there are other traits that are, that are important to success, tell us down in the comments below. And if you would like another shot at being successful, consider getting a Squarespace website. It's a great way to showcase the photos you've already taken, to sell prints, and to even just set goals for yourself. If you're always trying to put your very best photo in your portfolio, you kind of think about it the next time you go out and shoot. Sometimes it's that motivation you need to wake up early at 5 a.m. to get a better picture. So thank you, Squarespace, for making this podcast possible. Uh, in the description down below, you can go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, and then you can use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off, and that's C-H-E-L-S-E-A, like the football team. Got to spell it properly. Oh, this time you spelled it. I do. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. See you next time.